This will be the first video in the Monster Ecology series that I do not do in character. The reason being, I have so much to say about these apex predators, about dragons, and the way to portray them. In particular, I'll be speaking about the black dragon, which is also colloquially known as the skull dragon for its features. The older it gets, become more and more skull-like, resembling some foul, dead thing there in the hideous, choked swamps, with their wretched, fetid stench of the places. Now, the most important thing to do when attempting to bring dragons into your campaign is to have an extremely well fleshed out idea of how to role play these entities. Now, even if the situation is going to be nothing but combat, and there are a lot of ways that even in a combat situation you can get a good amount of role playing out of a dragon beforehand, you need to focus and make sure that the character never comes across two dimensional, that it comes across as something fully fleshed out and formed, even if the players never get to see those aspects of it, because the dragon must be remembered. If you run a campaign and shortly after the players say, we fought a dragon, you failed. You utterly, unabashedly failed. The dragon should be really a pinnacle in that campaign, uh, a high point. It is an apex predator. They are creatures that need to inspire horror and awe. They have a fearful presence that cows lesser creatures before them, and many creatures are lesser before dragons. All of this must be brought forward, and the psychology of a dragon is alien. Imagine, if you will, particularly when now we speak of black dragons, a crocodile. A crocodile is as nearly ancient as any reptilian form. And in our world, they have lived a long period of time, continuously in rivers and lakes and swamps, always looking up. And so too it is the black dragon who lays under the swamps, waiting for fish, more, or whatever else the swamp brings its way to lunge out. It is the ultimate ambush predator as it comes out of the swamp and claims its feast. But the difference is... A black dragon has a genius intellect and tremendous force of personality and of will. A black dragon has emotions that are heightened to a level vastly beyond our comprehension. An attempt for me to describe them would, would be folly, but to make sure that that comes across is very important. And one key way to do that is to remember that while they possess emotions that are heightened. They possess fewer of them. So more solidly make sure those things come across. And then, in their tremendous wisdom, perhaps if you can work it in some way that they can be shown to wholly not understand a concept, an emotion that registers to a human. Perhaps it's joy or love or compassion. These things may be utterly and wholly alien to the dragon completely absent from its mental makeup, the less emotions it has, the more heightened the emotions it does possess are, well, the more interestingly it's going to come off. So you must understand that dragons are sentient, not in a way that dwarves and elves and men are. They are sentient in a way almost like gods and should be played accordingly. They are ancient repositories of lore and understanding lost to men. And elves only attempted to be created and, and grasped at in many worlds. Dragons are those who invented magic. Think of the tremendous brains behind these cold, calculated reptiles. In the black dragon's case, particularly ones who look up perpetually. Think of it just that one small detail, how fully, totally, that changes them. How different that makes their outlook on life, always looking up. And then every once in a while, occasionally stretching those large bat wings and looking down, looking down from heights above, soaring past the cypress trees, 
and seeing all that is within their domain. It is highly important that any encounter with a dragon can not be rushed, constrained by time. Play it out. Get everything you can out of it. Have the players as scared as you can make them. And make sure they think they are going to die if they make the smallest of missteps. Because dragons want what you have. Their greed is there. They want territory. They want items. They want coins. They want to show all these things to show their worth and validate to themselves that that is who they compete against. For no one else should ever see their hoard and live to tell the tale of it. That is not what a dragon wants. It wants to have that supremacy, to dominate as much territory as it can, to have as many things as it can, things that others value, and then buy the value in others. They can thus determine their own self-worth because they are immensely prideful creatures. Perhaps they certainly should be because they are immensely strong, incredibly cunning, and possessing of magic. Tremendous power. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can use a dragon in a campaign. That's one of the things I want to focus on in this. Because one of the daunting things as a storyteller, particularly at lower levels of characters, is how do you introduce a dragon? Gosh, it's just going to kill the players. Well, hopefully your players are smart enough to sell for the dragon. And if they aren't, well, maybe it's time somebody gets to make up a new character. That's perfectly acceptable. Perfectly acceptable time to kill a player is in the hands of a dragon. Because they are immensely powerful. Now, I prepared several ways here. In, in which you could use one of these creatures, these creatures that have centuries of life. How are we going to work a black dragon into the game? Well, let's think about that. One way that you could do that is by interacting with very young black dragons, either uh, within a few years of having hatched or perhaps even a few decades. The young dragons are building their hordes and the players stumble upon them. Perhaps the dragons are cagey enough to realize that a fully well-armored and equipped adventuring party might be a bit more than they want to handle and tangle with right now. But the players also realize that that, regardless of how small, is still an acid-spewing black dragon with all these powers at its disposal. You have an uneasy truce there. And the players are perhaps put into uh, their minds to make an alliance with the dragon. And this can most effectively be done by offering tribute to it. For the dragon, regardless of whether it looks up from the swamp or not, will always in social situations look down upon those who are around it. In any time that it feels it can, and if you are human, it will almost assuredly feel that it can. But if you offer to this dragon things it does not have, for the youngest of black dragons are not going to have many coins, and coins are a thing that black dragons want tremendously. Taking in that wealth, stacking them up, coining, uh, comparing them, looking if this is a coin from Zental Keep and this is a coin from Hillsbar, comparing the dates, rubbing the coins together, looking at the silver and the copper, looking at the various uh, dates upon the coins, the way they are embossed, the kings and queens upon them. If this coin has elven marks on it, they may well be inspired to learn elven, to simply read out what their coin has to say. These are ways to, to come about it, but you can also sort of detail. Perhaps they stumble upon the young dragon's lair while the dragon is out, and they, the strange things it has. Polished rocks from riverbeds, feathers, beautiful looking feathers from various fowl of the swamp. This sort of treasure, whatever it can get. Perhaps strange looking, uh, but still artistic pieces of bark from trees, or other forms of stone that it is slowly chiseled away with its acid to resemble something quite beautiful, little broken pieces of quartz and other such things. Now, going from that to uh, another edge of the spectrum, dealing with a very old black dragon, if the characters are in a, a swamp, 
perhaps uh, an old man of a race that would seem appropriate to the players comes up to them. Of course, there's a polymorph dragon. He's passing himself off as some sort of a swamp individual, a ranger or such, to get a better idea of what these people are doing in the swamp. Using polymorph to dragons is a wonderful way to introduce them into a game. You can interact with them. You can have that, that air. And you can put a few signs that maybe, just maybe tip the players off that they're dealing with something a little bit different than they see in front of them. But hopefully you don't give them so much as to where they go, oh, well, I know what that is. It, it should leave them a bit guessing. But those, again, going back to the emotions, the incredible heightened emotions, but yet then lack of emotions at the same time in role play. this entity. You know, you can talk about how utterly piercing its eyes are and the strange... Look of the, the, the eyes are the gateway to its soul, and clearly a dragon has a soul as a thing of tremendous beauty and raw savage power, and well a soul worth much more weight than our own, and that can come across merely in the look of the eyes, the way it carries itself with confidence, and then again in the swamp, it's going to know that swamp in a way that no one else will, for that swamp is its, and it owns it, and it knows everything that it owns. Another way you could use them. Besides that, uh, well, to, to cover a bit more on that, in that the dragon could even begin to make uh, various alliances, despite the fact that black dragons are vilely evil, arrogant creatures, they are very intelligent. We could see the use in acquiring uh, these individuals for all sorts of things, because a dragon always wants, and they are smart and calculating enough to realize they could kill you now and take what you have, or perhaps... Just perhaps with the right prodding, you could bring them even more. And besides that, dragons play games, all sorts of games of power, with whether they are with uh, local savage humanoid tribes or the local respectable populace, whether it's humans or dwarves or what have you, or with one another. There are many games in which they play on politics. And enlisting allies and foot soldiers is the move of something of intellect. So... There are reasons a dragon may reach out to the players. The dragon could also be involved in a very high level of intrigue, a very old dragon that needs certain things done, or it certainly cannot leave its lair for too long unguarded, say, to allow others to come in and steal and pilfer it. it may be very willing to deal with the party, particularly if it doesn't have to give up many of its treasures. Uh, another way in dealing with dragons is when the players encounter one. And this is pretty much from a good player standpoint, and the game master is going to tip these things off by having tails in a tavern or having other various NPCs and swamp folk around tip off. Oh, if you're under the dragon out in the swamp, you need to act this way. And give your players some things that are interesting. Detail out treasure. Oh, we happen to have found this one copper coin that is. 870 years old with these dates from a long forgotten kingdom and running into the dragon perhaps that copper coin may have worth may be worth way more than a currently minted gold in his mind because it is something unattainable it's something different for his collection he wants different things the repetition of a thousand coins that are all identical is far less appealing to him it's still appealing but far less so. So having these strange little trinkets, various odd little treasures, is a very interesting way way to put together. Also having characters that are highly charismatic, highly social in your group that can offer up uh, various forms of entertainment, whether they are poetry or dance or such things. Because dragons are cultured, although their culture is alien and different, and reptilian. So it can be quite interesting watching a bard, as I've had the pleasure to do, attempt to entertain a dragon through their many abilities and seeing how receptive the dragon is, the bard being careful enough to watch the dragon is, oh, is this or is this better? It's a great way to showcase uh, character classes for characters that have a high charisma and an ability to perform and entertain because after all this may be something the dragon is at the very least unused to. You know, it does pose a problem if you are too valuable. You may end up some sort of cage the dragon has put together. Now, in a dra black dragon's territory, you should also see strange markings. You can see little bits of draconic 
written about the trees and particularly the rocks as it's taken very, very carefully and finely put its acid to sizzle in these arcane sigils, this Teutonic language it speaks into the trees, into the rocks, claiming if this is its territory, it owns this place. It is the Lord here. And these markings are probably not for the humanoids. These are for the other dragons that may come into the area. Because dragons do sleep for long, long periods of time. So seeing these strange uh, things about at various places, particularly places that can be easily seen from above, perhaps if there's little mountains within the swamps or high trees, such such as this, high old trees at the top, perhaps there's just a tiny bit of an acid bubbling into there with the strange runes and, and very, very large as well. It's quite easily seen. This can be quite uh, an interesting way to showcase a dragon. there Without ever even using the dragon in the game, perhaps, you know, the, the antagonist or lizard or the bullywogs or what have you out in the swamp, but we have this whole aura of the dragon around. We make it a hot summer's night. And we hear this massive, almost bullfrog-like croaking off in the swamp, far away from the player characters, but it, it roars through the swamp, echoing this tremendous bullfrog-like sound from one to another as the male dragons call to the females of their area, call to them for mating in those hot summer nights. The mix of that with the bites of the mosquitoes against the player's necks, the sogginess of the mud and sludge and slime of the swamp in their boots. The sounds of other things moving about in the brush. You create quite a scary environment when you add in the strange, bad smells. Particularly if they get close to the dragon and have to endure the near toxic way that the dragons uh, putrefy the water in their environment. In their murky bogs. Another way that you could use a dragon is having the players come down into one of these massive underground subterranean layers of black dragons and find not a dragon, but an immense horde, unguarded. And then as they get closer, as the light of their torches lick and bounce off of the myriad gold and copper coins reflected back in the light there atop that pile, that horde, that trove of coins and other various items. They see the skeletal remains of a dragon, or perhaps just the rotting remains, and perhaps the place is full of flies and various uh, beetles and other such things of the swamp. Think of how many kind of insects you can put in there. I think of how horrible you can make the stench, and the whole time you've been describing how bad everything smells, because the uh, acid combined with the, with the putridness of the water combined with all the natural bad smells of a swamp to begin with, and then you add a rotting, uh, you add thousands of rotting pounds of meat into the equation on top of these coins. And the players have to begin to deal with that. Now the dragon's lair is not unprotected. The dragon itself has many minions, both the reptilian and perhaps the most magical powers, others that have goblinoids, undead, uh, various mundane traps, even snakes and such things uh, inside its horde. And having a trap in that way, something that is actually alive inside the hordes of players coming to it, and the great thing players do is a lot of them are greedy, and they'll try to, oh, I'll get my character way over here, away from everyone else. We have this incredibly vast port, mostly of copper coins, and the players way outside. Well, it just so happens there's something inside that pile of coins, whether it's scarab beetles, uh, like coins, you know, traps or snakes or any various number of different sort of parasites you could put in there. He's so far away that he's not going to be able to have the other players immediately respond to help him. And that can really make the players just stand back in awe and horror of that horde. It can make the dragon's horde itself very, very scary. Now, would the players deal with the dragon, and perhaps they're sent there on a mission, perhaps they're there to claim the heart of a dragon from a wizard who knows the dragon is dead, or the eyes of the, of the dragon, or some other way to carve out its soul, and perhaps the dragon's soul is still hovering there, either by its force of will, attempting to will itself into some sort of undead state, or its ability or sorcery has conducted a ritual to mummify itself, or turn itself into some other form of undead, or perhaps 
a cult of dragon worshippers are also involved in it. You can resurrect the thing in the form of a, of a dracolich. witch. All of these various story seeds you can use and bring it together within the dragon's lair. There should be all sorts of strange things. You know, all the markings it's made because the acid can quite easily make rubbings and burnings into the stone under this uh, swamp where, where it lives. Now, And uh, one, one, one last way to use the Dragon Rear game. And this can actually be an entire game spanning campaign. Have the players come upon the swamp as part of an archaeological dig team. Their first level characters of whatever class and race is completely irrelevant. They've been hired onto the team for various reasons. In fact, that's the reason they all come together. Uh, you know, depending on how your name is, one of them may even be the archaeologist. Or the archaeologist itself, maybe another player character, you can have additional hooks in there. They dig up and unearth this dragon skull, which is particularly daunting if dragons are extremely rare in your world to be thought of as not existing. Because the players think, well, these are things from the past. Whether there are dragons out there or not is irrelevant. If the players think, well, there's not dragons, they dig up and unearth this massive, and you got to make it big, just enormous dragon head. And they stare at it, they stare at it, they're the hollow eyes, but you will keep attached somehow a symbol is an essence of that dragon is still there, still conniving its eternal hate so visceral that it clings to life. And one of the players, particularly one, perhaps it's sensitive, actually a sorcerer to you, which should make for a great story, perhaps even that sorcerer has lineage to this millennia-old dragon and he looks into the eyes and you hear that calling, the dragon wants to inhabit flesh again. You kind of combine a, a sort of hellraiser sort of scene eventually if the dragon can sort of be reincarnated through flesh at the behest of his character if the dragon can corrupt the character to hold promises of gold of magic of teaching and there's so much a dragon could offer you which is tremendously alluring and this game of temptation should be long spanned out over many many game sessions so perhaps the dragon will ultimately fuck them but maybe not completely, and maybe not at all, all depending on how things go. If the character continues to hear that whisper, which one works best with just one character, and perhaps even the other characters don't really know what it is, and it just keeps, keeps hearing that. And you can do it with a dragon skull or a, a dragon heart I use in the game, a massive diamond for a dragon's heart, and you know, the players you know, talking, or well, one of the players is talking to it and it's it's having this temptation where it wants to be reincarnated and where it wants to be resurrected it wants to be put back into flesh and he's going about it and he's falling in love with this female dragon and that can be another great thing adding a layer of romance there is this dragon creatures are very very prideful creatures creatures that think of themselves as very beautiful and taking that uh, seductive alluring role and realizing to play against the hot blood of the mammalian that it's tempting and manipulating with its with its ways and in doing that you can really cause the players to have a great deal of tension in the game and I can tell you from having done it myself it worked really wonderfully you gave us months and months of, of material of almost a year of material to run with in terms of playing the campaign so it's really about I guess what you dig out of the ground if you have part of that dragon and you're staring at it you're looking at it you know it's something old, something that can open doorways that were long lost closed, particularly for exploring a low magic game. And the dragon has all of those answers that the wizard wants desperately to find. And the only price is setting the dragon free. But what will the price will that entail? And will the dragon really be so happy that it's had to debase itself to dealing with such a low creature to get what it wants? Or will it be insane after having spent so much time in this undead limbo? It's a dragon after all. And in many worlds, it's quite likely that nothing clean comes to clean the soul of a dragon. Nothing is ferocious enough to take that soul. And no god, goodly god is going to want a corrupt, vile, black dragon soul. 
I was thinking of which was just unearthly. This massive skull from a swamp, a filthy swamp of mosquitoes everywhere, and then just the water draining off the skull as you unearth it with pulleys and levers out of the swamp, and you just give them this, you know, five minute long description of the water pouring out of the eyes, and then, then that one character sees something in the eyes that no one else does, and the seduction begins. So, these are some various different ways that you can use them outside of a combat situation. Now, in combat, the characters should be tremendously scared. Black dragons can hide. They can swim. They are ambush predators. Players are typically looking for a dragon up above them or to coming out of, uh, you know, uh, just to be sitting there, to have them see them. If the players walk along, boom, a dragon just... Uh, you know, like a crocodile, grabs one of them and then to the, to the bottom of this vast uh, pit, the others have to pursue. You know, because uh, there's a dragon down there in the swamp with one of their companions. This is how a black dragon will actually fight you. It's an ambush predator. The party walks along, and whichever one looks the easiest to pull down, it's not grabbing your big muscle man. If it's cased you out, it's going to grab your wizard, because dragons are very smart, and wizards are typically not very physically uh, adept, so they're not going to be able to get away from it. Grabs a wizard, grabs a small character, what have you, the weak link goes down and eats it. What is the rest of the party going to do? My dragons don't come out and fly around up in the air. No, no, it's back down under the water. You do. That is horrifying to most of the players. And then, you know, if they actually can get it into a position, you know, you can work the dragon back up into the system of caverns. And, you know, it's probably eating the player by now. Sorry about his damn luck, but, you know, that's what you get. Dragon encounters should be lethal. You know, when, when the dragon finally gets uh, the players onto, onto that, that footing, a game of cat and mouse can ensue. A game where the dragon is perhaps now part hungry for flesh. After all, it's just filled its appetite with what's ripped off of this one and perhaps already deposited the remains of this person into one of its uh, small antechambers full of water to brine and pickle up the body of uh, the first adventure that it's killed and it wants to throw more in there. And perhaps it's quite taken a liking to the fighter's shield and that ring with the thief's handle. It's seen all of this. It has seen it all like that before the players see anything with it. Remember, black dragons can hide. And there are huge circumstantial bonuses for, for murky water and such things. So from a uh, mechanical perspective, the players very well, very well may not even see it. And now, in addition... As it's getting away with this one, it could begin to use its magic. And the dragon uh, on the very end may well take up to the air. But in addition, as the players are coming into the water, guess what's coming for them? The crocodiles. Yes, black dragons can charm reptiles. Why wouldn't you have crocodiles there? The black dragon itself would probably have had them brought in one way or another, bred them. Even if it's in a climate that's a bit colder. Now, if it's a very cold climate, a black dragon probably isn't going to be there to begin with. So, if it's just a bit colder than a crocodile alligator ought to be, it's still okay. And there's all sorts of other reptiles that they might have about. And these minions will be attacking the players as the dragon's getting away with the first one. Now, as those have weakened them up, the dragon may well have come past through the lair and lead the players to traps to come back and set up a second ambush for them somewhere else as they come back up up through under the water, up through this entire layer. There's five of them left now, so they're, they're, they're looking around. Boom, the dragon hits them again because players often don't, will not expect the exact, same sort, that, the exact same sort of tactic again, but from a completely different place. You know, they're, they're coming out of here. You know, you've already kept describing all the swamp around them. You keep always describing that to them. As it comes around, bam, the dragon grabs another one of them, and off it goes. This makes a dragon in Incredibly dangerous, and the players will probably run. Black dragons are things that players probably won't be able to kill if you use them tactically correctly. The ECL on them versus the party with those sort of tactics, they're, you know, they're going to be incredibly hard to deal with. The resourceful players can always throw you great curveballs to make an encounter with that very fun. Remember, dragons have immunities, they have magic resistance, they have a lot of hit points, damage reduction, they are very, very hard to deal with. And when you add your brain, which is probably less than their brain, into the situation, then 
you can really have an encounter that is uh, tremendously scary to the players, and it would be the kind of thing that, that they remember for a long, long time. You can, you can always have the dragon uh, talking to them, and perhaps, uh, you know, the, the players are smart enough after two of them have been killed to begin to try to reason, okay, well, we'll, we'll give you these things, dragon, please, please let us go, and the dragon, perhaps, if they can appeal quickly to its vanity, comes out, mm, okay. And speaks to them cruelly, putting itself over, and and that's this uh, could provide something quite interesting in the game. Being able to role play with the dragon from its perspective after it's just killed two of you. This is not your typical Dungeons and Dragons. This is something it's elevated to to another level. There's a, uh, quite a bit of interest there in having uh, the encounter be of, of uh, such. Uh, Tremendous ability. And remember, you know, with, with that acid just burning away at people's skin, it's a tremendous uh, advantage to them having acid because it's a breath weapon that is very different from other dragons. It's not simply a bunch of fire. You know, that acid is just burning away, eating away at the flesh. You can really describe it to players how it's just, you know, just completely burning you, and it can be more easily applied into traps than certain other things. Um, but that is some of the ways, some of the very few ways I can give you to have a black dragon integrated into your campaign and to use a black dragon very effectively. Make them ferocious. Make the players always remember them. Make them very, very scared. And remember, even when they wear the skin of man or elf, the eyes hold all truth. Should hold that pride and that swagger and that tremendous intellect behind them because the dragon always wants you to see that. Play them as the alien near gods that they are, and your players will 